Hello everybody, this is Emily Casey on Staten Island Locals. Um, y'all see that cloud this morning it, on Staten Island? When I was walking to the bus, I was walking straight through it. I could not see. That was insane. But yeah, that was crazy in the sun. I kind of feel crazy. I wish I was a crazy in the sun. Um, but yeah, thank you all for listening. Later on, we're going to talk about the Ben Soto Skate Park update. Um, also, when we were young, because I went to that, so you didn't have to. And just um, some upcoming shows and stuff that's happening on Stand On. So thank you for listening. This is Burnout by The Parallel Line. Thank you for listening again. I wasn't here last week, so I have a lot to talk about. Um, Yeah, I'm a filmmaker, so I was on set. (laughs) Yeah. So first thing I wanted to talk about, it's been like two weeks, and I've been meaning to talk about this. Um, The Ben Soto Skate Park update, I'm so excited. I remember when I was like five, and I saw the old park, and I was like, I want to go on that. That looks so cool. Oh, my God. And then, like, it got stripped down and all that shit. And, I okay, like, not gonna lie, I'm really bad at ollieing. I literally, I'm really, really bad at it. And what they have now set up at Midland is just, like, you have to know how to ollie to do anything there. And it just, it just sucks. Like, I really want ramps back because I just like to go up and down the ramps because I'm, I'm little and baby and I don't feel like doing jumps and shit. Um... So I'm so excited. Um, the Instagram account Shaolin's Finest, it, the O is with a zero. Shaolin's Finest, the um they the people behind that um and like a few like skaters from Staten Island they put together a plan, um and like a uh like a blueprint and everything for what they wanted the uh how to rebuild the park. And New York City Parks Department approved the proposal to build the park through their Shoreline Parks plan to revitalize the waterfront. Um, They also said that, based on surveys, 60% of people who live on and pass through Staten Island uh, enjoy Midland Beach the most, which I think is so nice because I enjoy Midland Beach a lot. Um, So, yeah. 
I'm the next song I'm going to play is The Way I Handle by Willowbrook. Um and yeah, enjoy some Willowbrook. So, next that I want to talk about is, since it's a Halloween, you know, we have to talk about some spooky, scary places. The Kreischer Mansion has been having a little Halloween house um, for the past few weekends, and they're closing it up on Halloween. Halloween's going to be the last day you can go. I have a few friends who work there, and I'm so sad. I'm not able to go. I just want to go see my homies and get scared or whatever. But, um, but yeah. The, I just want to give a little history of the place because everybody knows it's a little scary. Um, so the main thing that happened there is Edward B. Kreischer. He was like the son of the guy who owned the company, like the brick company that owned the place. Um, he was the original guy who died there. He, uh, committed suicide sadly in 1894. That's a long long time ago um but then the part that like people think is like the most like hauntedest part i guess is a hundred years later which now i just realized that's only in 1994 bruh uh robert mckelvey was murdered in the house by joseph young the caretaker that's so 
That sounds like such like a horror movie, but I mean, it was the mob. It was the mafia. It's the Staten Island Italian mafia. They be <laughs> and they killed him. They cause they owed him money, and um, apparently they stabbed him and burned his body in the basement, and that's why the place is haunted. But I did do some research, and apparently, all the ghosts there, none of them have to do with that. Everybody says that it's like this German chef. And, like, some children who are locked in a closet? I don't know. I I am personally uh, not really scared by those things. But, um, but yeah, they got, the, they got the, the haunted house going on. It looks like a lot of fun. Um, I think it's, like, 30 bucks to go, which honestly isn't that bad. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I'm going to play... Who am I going to play? I'm going to play the band The Uncertain. I don't know if they're all from Staten Island, but my friend Chris is in it. And I know him since I was like in kindergarten. So he's definitely from Staten Island. So this is Ask Me How I Feel by The Uncertain. Listen up, this is my confession. So I guess I need to mention that I don't know where I belong. And everything just feels so wrong. Every single choice I question. To learn my lesson My head is spinning round again Just save me from this mess I'm in I don't know what to say I just need to say Took a trip all by myself, took a trip to find myself, cause I gotta get away, bring myself off darker days, take a chance I won't regret, to see a world beyond this mess, so will you choose to step aside, or take my hand and join the ride?
that was the uncertain. They had a whole series on TikTok where they covered a song from every one of the bands in When We Were Young Festival leading up to the festival. And it was so I was so cool because I would see them on my TikTok for you page just like every other day or like every other week. And I'd be like, oh, yeah, look, there they go. Um, But yeah, so. I went out to the festival, actually. They did, too. I didn't get to see them. But I went out to the festival, um, and uh, I don't know if anybody heard, but I had tickets for Saturday. And you know what that meant? Uh, disaster. So I went out, spent a bunch of money on it. Uh, we got, like, the hotel ticket package that they were offering. So we also got, a, like, a decent hotel. They had, like, a nice pool but we weren't allowed to go in the pool because you had to make a reservation, bruh. Um, but yeah, so we went out there, and I don't know if you guys heard, but day one was canceled. Oh, it sucked. Uh, we went to Omega Mart. I don't know if y'all know what that is. It was a TikTok trend, um, like, to go there. It's like a little viral place, and it's really, really cool. But we went out there. It was canceled. Uh, guys, it was not like Firefest. Fest. Everyone's like, oh my god, I knew it was going to be canceled, bruh, no, 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 it was canceled because our Uber driver actually told us this the day before, there's a glacier up in, like, the national parks or somewhere, up north or whatever, and it, like, broke off and fell, and when it fell, it created a freakish gust of wind that blasted over all of Nevada and, like, into California, um, and that is, and they were like, oh, no, uh, that's bad, and it only lasts for a little bit, because it's just, like, one gust of wind, you know, it's just, like, a go, you know, um, and so it was just, like, a one-day little wind, except it wasn't little, um, where we were, the wind wasn't bad, but I've seen footage of wind in other places being really, really bad, and our Uber driver back to the airport, told us that like her daughter's like trees and like her like in front of her house like fell down because of the wind and everything like it was kind of crazy um so it wasn't that bad you know I thought it was gonna be like bullshit but it wasn't um yeah so instead of going to the fest uh, you know I, I'm sure y'all have seen on the internet if you have kept up with the festival um people like a lot of the bands played little shows for free in like different venues around town and um the first one that came out was all american rejects but they were playing at a venue that held like a hundred people like literally like 100 people or like 150 or something that and for perspective eighty thousand people were gonna go to the festival so uh there was no way in hell we were getting into that but we did find a little venue where the horror pops were playing. We missed them because there were too many people. But afterwards, a bunch of local bands played. And, you know, it reminded me of uh, of, our, of our little friends that we hope make it huge one day, you know. Um, we went to this venue. I'm forgetting the name right now. But it ended with Saloon. And I was like, oh, my God, Mother Pug Saloon. Oh, my God. But, yeah, we saw one band and then left because Vegas, they go all night. The first band started at midnight, and we were tired. So, But we saw them. They're called Call Shot. And I don't really – I haven't played this song before now because I only heard them live. But they're pretty funny. Um yeah, they were they were kind of silly. They <laughs> like he was like, "Oh my god, this this song is about how I have no friends." And then they played the song, and the next song was like, "This song is about how I love snowboarding." And that just stuck with me. He's like, "This song is about how he loves snowboarding." But anyways, yeah, this is called Shout. I'm gonna, I'm going to play them. They're a Las Vegas local band. I know, we're Staten Island, but I just wanted to give them a little moment. So here's Friends by Call Shot.
so that was Call Shot. Yeah, that was their song that was about no friends, having no friends. I I heard the lyrics. Because <laughs> uh, being there at that show, like, it was kind of crazy. I didn't even, I couldn't even really tell what was happening. It was so funny. There was a mosh pit, and it was only girls in the mosh pit. Um, even though there was a bunch of guys there, there was mostly dudes there, but there were only girls in the mosh pit, and that was so fucking cool. Um, and I was gonna go in the mosh pit, but my friends were, like, tired, and they didn't want to go with me, so I didn't want to go by myself. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the actual festival. I would say that, obviously, the best band was My Chem, um, but I was so happy to see A Day to Remember and Pierce the Veil, and I was so sad that the story so far was at the same time as A Day to Remember. Oh my god, I love those two bands, and to choose between them was, like, terrible. I was just thinking to myself, which tickets would be more expensive, and I was like, A Day to Remember is probably a little more expensive, so I'll go see them now, and then I can buy tickets to the story so far on a different day. But the best crowd had to be mom jeans, and I'm so surprised. Okay, I'm a notorious mom jeans hater. If any anybody who knows me knows I hate mom, I hate mom jeans. Um, I just don't like how he's like, man. You know, he has like that emo. He has like the classic emo voice, and I kind of hate it. Like, like some Blink One Eighty Two songs, like I literally cannot listen to at all. Um. But their crowd was the was so fucking cool. Like, I think that there there was like a bigger band playing, and so a lot of it was like really like the main Mom Jeans fans were seeing them, you know. And so everybody was like super hyped. There was a pit. I think there was two pits at the same time. As at one point there was a small um, little group. One thing that I thought was really funny though. Um, my friend Bridget, shout out Bridget Slovin, I love Bridget Slovin, um, she went to a Mom Jeans concert, like, I think, in, like, the spring, and she said that it was awesome, except Mom Jeans fans stink, bro, <laughs> when I tell you that it was true, I don't know why, they, they be stinky, bro, they were stinky, <laughs> they had, like, a specific stench, of like not good and I, I maybe it's because they just go hard and they get sweaty and they just don't fucking wear deodorant or some shit but they were yucky bro but they were the most lit okay so I, I'll give them that it'll it cancels out a little bit um so that that is what I thought about that bro uh, <laughs> I will say Avril was pretty cool to see but I wish I went to see the All American Rejects instead because I heard that they were insane. I took my little notes on like what I heard happen, and <laughs> they kept thanking everyone for like listening to them and how they're like the Bionicles band. And like at one point, they were like, This song goes out to every motherfucker who collects Legos. I didn't know that their song was like a theme song for Legos. Um,. I guess I'm just not a Lego enthusiast, personally, but I do love the All American Rejects, and they were like super like old people makeup because it is kind of funny how when we were young it implies that all the bands are super old. <laughs> and meanwhile, they're all like a lot of them are just like thirty, you know? They're not like that old. Um, some other things I wrote down because on the plane home from Vegas, um. Oh, I forgot to say, I paid a billion dollars to go the second day, even though I had tickets to the first day. Paid one billion dollars, of some total one billion dollars. And you know, I, I, I kind of tried to win it back in Vegas. Um, No, I'm lying. I hate gambling. I, I put three dollars in the slots, and I got 40 cents back. But yeah, I, I was, on the way back, I was listening to Alt Nation radio station on Sirius XM, and... They had some really cool coverage. They, um, some bands were, um, like being interviewed on there, and apparently the used had a wall of dev sway. Um, uh, yeah, and they interviewed Jimmy Eat World on the radio station. I, oh my god, I was I was listening to the to the girl. I I don't know her name, but she was like 
she was like me oh my god I was thinking to myself like oh my god I wish I could be her one day <laughs> um she was so cool but she was talking to Jimmy Eat World um and I like something that I thought was really interesting that they that the singer said I don't really need know the names of the people in the band sorry but um he said okay no yeah he was talking about how they want to start making more singles or EPs um instead of just full length albums and she was wondering like why like why would you want to do that and he was like they want to put out more variety of songs at the same time and I found this super interesting that she asked him um why can't you just put a variety of songs in an album and from a band that big it's really interesting hearing that the main reason isn't because of storytelling it isn't about a vibe it's about money which I guess makes sense but he said that like he was very insistent on the reason why you make an album super cohesive with its sound is because it's more expensive to make it varied and that it's cheaper to record a bunch of songs with the same type of setup and in doing so it makes the songs sound similar um and I found I found that so interesting because you know a lot of times people talk about the art of things um and not about the business side and I love I love hearing about the business side because it, it's what I just said nobody talks about it um also Anne Berlin uh, another band that out, that was at where when we were young um they were in the singer from that band was interviewed and he was talking about how um when he got really big he like not that he lost his passion for music but it felt like a chore a little bit it felt you know it felt it was a job for him. He was talking about how he had all the age all, when he had all of his agents and managers and lawyers. It was like it was like a job instead of something that like comes from the soul. Because um, he he was talking about how everybody starts out with music as a hobby, and then whoever's big it grows and it becomes a career. Um, and he said that when their band died down and wasn't as popular anymore, um, he felt more inspired to make music because it, he didn't have that pressure of like having to do tours and um, come out with music that people will like. He just makes them, which I thought that was so fun to hear that Anne Berlin is going to have fun making music again. I personally have not listened to too much music by them but they po they've popped up over the years in random playlists and stuff um so yeah that's all i'm gonna say about that for now i'm gonna play some more music i'm gonna play um i'm looking at them i i decided before but i forgot what i decided i'm gonna play vega maestro i've never played them yet and so here is Bombardier, Bombardier.
So that was Vega Maestro. I actually had not heard that song before, and that was such a nice song. I enjoyed that. I'm always sitting in the booth. It's so funny. Um, a lot of these songs I'd be singing along to by myself. I work at the radio station um, by myself during this time, so I just be singing so loud. Nobody hears me. It's so great. I'm so lonely by myself when I get to fucking scream. Um I'm just going to list off some shows that are this uh, weekend, I guess, uh, around 
uh, that are just coming up. They're just shows that are coming up in Staten Island. So we got Friday the 28th. These are Halloween shows, too. Friday the 28th, this Friday, at 6 p.m. at Mother Pugs. They're having their Pugs Halloween Fest with Jacuzzi Fire, The Parallel Lines, Pastel, and Super Future. And they're going to be playing. and It's going to be great. Oh, and also High Risk Maneuver, my bad. I forgot about them. No, I didn't. I just didn't read to the next line. But, um, yeah, there's going to be a costume contest. Um, and there's also a $5 cover fee to go in. But I can just tell it's going to be so fun. Mother Pugs is always a, go- a great time. Just because they have the fucking stage. The stage just changes everything. It's so awesome. So, yeah, that's Friday, October 28th, Halloween slay and then saturday october 29th next day if you guys want head over to richmond tattoo at 8 p.m and there vega maestro the gamma ghouls uh, that <laughs> the name always makes me laugh because my friend's name is gabby and i call her gabba ghoul but anyways vega maestro gamma ghouls willowbrook they're all gonna be playing at richmond tattoo there's going to be a costume contest with a $300 gift card prize. I don't know if it's for Richmond Tattoo or if it's like a different gift card. I don't know. Probably for Richmond Tattoo. And also, they're doing $100 tattoos that night. So if you guys want a tattoo or go see some awesome bands, head over to Richmond Tattoo Saturday, October 29th. And then, this is going to be super exciting, November 4th, past Halloween, November 4th at 9 p.m. at Flagship Brewery is the first night of their Battle of the Bands. It's going to be going, I think, until December. And the two bands that are going to be battling that night are Figurehead versus The t- uh, the Telling Time. And so that's going to be super exciting. Um, I'm going to put all these on our um, Instagram stories. Um, I have a little highlight of a bunch of um posters for shows that are coming up so if you click through that you can find these mother pugs halloween richmond tattoo halloween flagship brewery battle of the bands those are the three um main ones that are coming up and yeah um I'm going to try to start re- reposting these uh, little, what am I saying? The, the fucking radio show. We're gonna be, I'm going to repost them. I'm going to record them and post them on, on YouTube or something so you guys can like rewatch it. Because I know that there are people who do want to listen but are not free on Tuesdays at 5 o'clock. Um, so I'm going to start reposting them so everybody can listen hear what I have to say. I'm also trying to get someone on next week. I'm going to get someone cool on next week. So stay tuned for that. Another thing, I'm just talking about the radio show now. I'm just promoting all our little stuff. We are Staten Island Locals on Instagram. And if you look at our bio, we have our playlist that um, has all the songs that I've been playing. If you know any bands who want to be on the show i'm i'm down to play literally any staten island band if you are from or not even a band like if you're just like a, a solo a solo act a slay solo act um send me your stuff i want to play it um and i'll put it on the on the the playlist our spotify playlist i also started a little blog for the radio show because i st- Like, you hear me say all this stuff, but it's nice to have it written down. You can read it. You can look at it. um, And you can, you know, like, remember these things for later. Um, Yeah, I'm going to play some... uh, I'm going to play some Gamma Ghouls because they're playing this weekend. Um, Thank you all for listening. Wake up! Wake up!
actually have time for one more song so i'm gonna play uh i'm gonna play signals by modern day machines thank you guys so much for listening today uh i i can see how many people are listening and it made me happy that i wasn't i wasn't just by myself so here's signals by modern day machines uh see you next week tuesdays at five o'clock wsva radio radio uh, goodbye.